Well, well I, I want to uh, welcome uh, Prime Minister Tony Schmidt uh, to the White House and to the Oval Office. This is the first time that we've had a chance to meet, but uh, obviously we've been very impressed with the first uh, five months of, uh, of her Prime Ministership. Uh, I shared with her uh, how much Michelle and I appreciated the extraordinary hospitality that was uh, shown to Michelle and, uh, and I when I visited Copenhagen in the past. And uh, I also wanted to just say how much we appreciate the great alliance and partnership that we have uh, with the Danish people on a whole range of international issues. Um, obviously, most recently, the operations in Libya uh, could not have uh, been as effective had it not been for the precision and the excellence of uh, the Danish Armed Forces uh, and their pilots. Uh, but that's fairly typical of the way that uh, Danes have uh, punched above their weight uh, in international affairs. Uh, in Afghanistan, I thanked uh, the Prime Minister for the extraordinary contributions of Danish troops uh, in the Helmand area. They operate uh, without caveat, uh, have taken significant casualties, uh, for which obviously uh, all of us uh, extend our condolences to the families uh, that have been affected. Uh, but because of the uh, outstanding work that's been done by uh, Danish soldiers in Afghanistan, uh, we're seeing great progress in the areas uh, where they operate. Uh, we had a chance to talk about the economy. Uh, we, uh, we, as we were exchanging notes, it, it turns out that like folks here in the United States, everybody in uh, Denmark wants to talk about the economy all the time. Uh, and jobs and growth, and uh, we agreed that there has been some progress uh, in resolving the sovereign debt issues, uh, that there's been some progress with respect to the agreements between the EU and the IMF uh, and Greece, uh, the new government in Italy, uh, new governments in Spain and Portugal uh, are all making some significant progress, but that there's a lot more work to do. Uh, and we will be consulting closely with uh, Denmark, uh, and we exchanged ideas on how we can ensure not only economic stability in Europe, but also growth in Europe, because if Europe is growing, uh, then that benefits the U.S. economy as well. And we uh, emphasized, are there additional ways that we can encourage trade uh, and reduce economic frictions between uh, uh, the two sides of uh, the transatlantic relationship? Uh, in preparation for our meeting uh, in Chicago and NATO, in my hometown, uh, we talked about the transition that was already agreed to in Lisbon uh, when it comes to uh, putting Afghans in the lead in security uh, over the next several years. And uh, we are going to be consulting closely with not only Denmark but our other allies in making sure that that is a uh, smooth transition and one that is sustainable, uh, where we continue to help uh, the Afghan government uh, to support its own sovereignty uh, and to effectively uh, uh, control its borders. We also discussed uh, the extraordinary counterterrorism cooperation that's taken place between our two countries. And uh, I thanked the Prime Minister uh, for the excellent work that her intelligence team uh, has done. Uh, we are in constant communication on a whole host of issues. Uh, the Danes are very much one of the leaders when it comes to counterterrorism uh, and are obviously familiar with uh, the significant threats uh, that are posed by terrorism. And so we appreciated that very much. Um, and we had a chance to talk about uh, a, a wide range of international issues, including the situation in Syria. Uh, and I have to say that all of us who have been seeing the terrible pictures coming out of Syria and homes recently uh, recognize it is absolutely imperative for the international community to rally and send a clear message to President Assad that it is time for a transition, it is time for uh, that regime to move on, and it is try time to stop uh, the killing of Syrian citizens by their own government. And I'm encouraged by the international unity that we uh, are developing, the meeting that took place uh, in Tunisia uh, that Secretary Clinton had attended, uh, and we are going to continue to keep the pressure up and look for every tool available uh, to prevent the slaughter of innocents in Syria. Uh, and this is an area where I think uh, the Prime Minister and I uh, deeply agree. It, it, it's important that we not be bystanders uh, during uh, these extraordinary events. Uh, 
Uh, at the same time, there are other threats uh, in the region, including uh, uh, the situation in Iran. Uh, and I thanked uh, the Prime Minister and the Danish government for their leadership role in applying the toughest sanctions we've ever seen coming out of the EU. Uh, difficult sanctions to apply, but uh, we both agreed that we're making progress and they are working in sending a message to Iran that it needs to take a different path uh, if it wants to rejoin the international community and that uh, there is an expectation on the part of uh, the world that they abide by uh, their international uh, obligations when it comes to their nuclear program. So uh, the final thing we talked about was the fact that we both have two daughters. Uh, they're roughly the same age as we traded notes. Uh, the Prime Minister's daughters are slightly older than Malia and Sasha. Uh, she assures me that they continue to uh, uh, behave themselves uh, even well into their teenage years. So uh, uh, I'm encouraged by that report. <laughs> and, uh, and I thank you very much. I hope uh, that you have a wonderful stay while you're here. And uh, we look forward to uh, working with you again uh, in the near future. Thank you, Mr. President. And thank you so much for your, your kind words. I mean, the Danish people uh, have a very strong sense uh, of uh, closeness to the United States. Uh, we always have had that sense. Uh, we have uh, close economic, political uh, ties with each other. But not only that, we exchange, uh, we have to exchange some tourism, uh, students, uh, ideas, uh, culture. Uh, but perhaps most important of all, we, have, we share common values. And I think in a turbulent time, uh, this, this is very, very important. So basically, uh, the friendship and the alliance between our two countries uh, is uh, in, uh, in a very good shape uh, right now. And I thank you uh, for that. As you said, we discussed the, uh, the economic situation. Denmark holds the presidency of the EU right now, and uh, we talk about the uh, debt uh, situation uh, most of the time in Europe. Uh, I convey the message to the president. I am convinced uh, that we will uh, see ourselves through uh, this, this crisis. We, don't, we have put some very important measures in place. We have fiscal consolidation, we have reforms, and we have uh, a focus on growth and jobs right now. In doing that, in, in, in this endeavor, I think a closer transatlantic uh, relationship would be important. We are dependent on each other, and we should have closer trade with each other, and I think that will be part of creating a sustainable growth in, in our uh, countries. As you were saying, Mr. President, um, we also have uh, close ties in terms of uh, security. Uh, it is uh, clear and has been for a long time that Danish soldiers are serving alongside uh, American soldiers uh, in Afghanistan. And uh, I use the opportunity today to thank you and the American people for the great effort you have put uh, in Afghanistan. It is greatly appreciated worldwide. And I know that the Danish people uh, really appreciate uh, the global leadership that you and your people have taken also in, in that context. Uh, I look forward, of course, to coming back to the States, to your hometown, Chicago, participating in the NATO summit. What we will be discussing there is uh, Afghanistan, of course. Uh, one of the m major issues there is the transition to the next phase in Afghanistan. And where, what we want to see is the Afghans taking over responsibility for their own security. And we are in Europe with the, on the Danish leadership trying to uh, gather donors uh, in this, uh, in, in securing that the Afghans are capable of taking over their own uh, security. Uh, we have some great examples of our alliance. Uh, we have uh, worked together again in, uh, in Libya, where we, uh, we uh, made sure uh, that, uh, we, uh, that Libya came out uh, on a path of uh, democracy. And I think, again, the Americans showed leadership in, uh, in that uh, context. Another area that we discussed, as you said, was uh, Syria, which is uh, quite the opposite situation. It is horrendous what we see in Syria right now. But I think it is also very, very true that uh, we have worked together in that area. We must continue, to continue that endeavor. And just today, we have seen that on, under the leadership of the, the League of Arab States, uh, there has been a, a, a a step forward in, in trying to put pressure on, on Syria, which is very, very important. The same, of course, goes for uh, Iran. Another area in security where we work together is in terms of piracy. And uh, I use the opportunity of thanking sincerely uh, the pre president uh, for the courageous operation that led to the freeing uh, of two aid workers uh, that worked for the Danish Refugee Council. They are now safe. 
uh, because of the Americans. Thank you uh, for that. So basically, our security, uh, our cooperation in terms of security are very great uh, indeed. Um, I will finish here just by saying that I think our meeting here today has confirmed the friendship and the alliance uh, between our two countries. Uh, we, uh, there's a lot uh, we can do that. You're always welcome to come to Denmark. Uh, and I think it is uh, very, very important uh, that we have these kind of meet meetings to renew the friendship. And this is what we've done today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.